What's going on YouTube? Welcome back for another video. Today we are going to do some shit that I have planned in my mind. Okay. We're going to talk a little bit about what the future of this channel holds, what the future of this channel is. And we're going to do a little bit of a book review, guys. A trilogy of books. So let's get started on the trilogy of the books. Before we do the future of this channel. Grab yeah, both my books because they're sitting right here. Okay. Now, I know you all have seen, or some of you have not seen, but I know a lot of you out there like to watch gangster movies. I like to watch the dramatization of gangsters and many other things. Um, many other mafia movies, crime movies. But there's one crime trilogy of movies that I like to watch and that is The Godfather. Now, I'm a huge Mario Puzo fan when I was 13 years old when I first saw my The Godfather Part 1. My grandma, my uh, parents had recently acquired the video cassettes, all three of them. Well, four of them actually. There was four video cassettes. Uh, oh. The first one had two, second one had one, and the third one I think had either had one or two. I'm not quite sure, but I'll have to look that back up. But um, I saw my first taste of what an R-rated movie was all about. Of course, we had HBO, so I've seen plenty of R-rated movies before that, but this was the first actual movie that I saw that was R-rated that I didn't have to wait to come on HBO. So, that was the first time I ever saw an R-rated movie that I didn't have to wait for HBO to play. And it was intriguing. I loved it. But that's not why this. I've actually acquired all three of the Godfather books. I'm going to give you a little rundown history of these books and exactly what these books are about and I will tell you where I stand in the books. And I'll do that and god damn it. Fucking sorry guys. The sweet tea I tell you. Good stuff, but don't drink it before you do this video. Make sure your mouth is dry. Not really dry, dry. I mean, like. That sugar. That sugar, that's what it is. That's why you gotta spit so hard. People ask me, people always ask me, why do you spit so hard when you dip? Because I drink sodas, or used to drink a lot of soda. I used to drink a, I drink a lot of sweet tea and a lot of water, and anything that's liquid is going to kill. Pretty much gonna make you have a stringy spit. I don't care what it is. Even if it's sugar free and it has no sugar in it whatsoever, it's still gonna kill your freaking. It's still gonna kill you when you dip because you're gonna still get that stringy spit. Because your body produces an excess of saliva when you do that and it retains in your mouth until you either stop drinking, let it. and not, and not a sell. you know, you start. stop drinking. Your mouth kind of dries out and doesn't salivate as much when your mouth is dry, dry, not real dry, like where you're going like parts where you're going, oh, you know, stuff like that. But anyway, back to the books. And the first book, now I'm going to go in order here, and uh, I will kind of explain the movies. I'll explain what the movies. Explain where the movies fit in in this uh, in between the books and stuff, so you guys can know what to watch and what not to watch. I mean, what to watch really, what to 
where you can watch the movies. And the first book and first movie coincide together exactly the same time. That is The Godfather by Mario Puzo. This is uh, copyrighted in 19, November 1978. That was the first signet printing. This book. It doesn't. It was 1969 when this book first appeared on store shelves. Uh, I don't remember who did it really. Who who produced? Who uh? Um, he was writing for what company he was writing for. So. But uh, first things first. This is basically the entire first movie in a book. Very, very good novel. Intriguing, hard to put down, page after page of intriguing suspense, killing, shooting. Stories are amazing. Each story each story is really amazing. And this goes again. There it goes. This uh, goes with uh, the first movie. Now, the first movie, if you watch the first movie after you read the book, you'll understand a little bit more of why they cut some of the scenes out, some of the stories out of the first movie. They, they cut it out because there's extra stories in here. There are a few stories. Story of, uh, in this book, there's a story of Vito Corleone and his three sons, Johnny Fontaine, Lucy Mancini, and a girl with a bigger than average female parts down there and um, it's just too much to fit into this if they put all the stories in there it will be six hours long it's already three hours long with, with commercials it's like two hours and 55 it's like two hours and 45 minutes long uh, without commercials on DVD it's one DVD but it's a really good DVD it's a really good movie I mean Now the the main the, the, the movie is about Vito Corleone and his three sons and going through the model for family. It's about family basically. It's an amazing book and I really do recommend it as a read. And it's a great book. Pick it up for about eight bucks at your local bookstore. And paperback too. Now the next book, that was written by Mario Puzo, by the way. The next book is written by Michael Weingartner. Michael Weingartner wrote the second book based on the characters of the Mario Puzo novel, The Godfather. And this is basically a two-part novel. The first half of the novel goes to 1958. Then it shuts in to 1950, it goes to 1958. 1958 to 1959 is the second movie with flashback scenes of Vito Corleone from the first novel. So basically what you read in the first novel gets put into the second movie. It goes in between this book and its second half. I would say about, oh... About page 291 is the 292 is the first page of the second half of the, of the after the movie. So you watch the second movie in between page 290 and 292, then you read the second half of this book, and it's still good. And this is what the back of it says: Clemenza had been the one who brought Mike Corleone to be straightened out a few weeks after his return to America from Sicily. His exile in Sicily. The killings of Swatch on McCluskey, which has served to make his bones, 
had happened three years earlier. Clemenza had tickets to a Dodgers game, second row right behind the plate. Michael had spent 70 of the eight, last eight years away from America, fighting and killing in a constant danger of being killed. He didn't miss things. He hadn't even been to his brother's funeral. The Dodgers beat the sh Chicago 4-1. to one. On the way home, he, they stopped at what was, what when Michael left the country had been the offices of a daily newspaper. When they entered the huge empty room with printing press had been, been there, the pale light, late summer light, sitting behind a long table with Tessio and Vito Corleone. On the table was a tapered candle, a holy card, a pistol, and a knife. Michael knew what was coming. They were initiating him into the family. Really a good book. Greatly, I've read part of this book. I've never actually finished the book. I never even finished the first one. I kind of jumped into this one head first without re finishing up the second one. But I intend to finish the first one before I even start reading this one. Now, I had the first one completely on audiobook, so that's really cool. So, I had the second one partially on audiobook. I don't know what happened to all my... I had all three of them on audiobook at one point. But I guess I sold them just to get... Because I just didn't need them. Because I have all three books now. But it's a really good book. He, Michael Weigler's first Godfather novel. And he did a fantastic job using the characters from the first novel in this one. And it's a really a short book. It's actually only like 400 pages long. So it's really short. Now the next and last of the Godfather trilogy is Godfather's Revenge. Mar Mark Weingartner's second novel in the Godfather trilogy, the last, and it is a great capstone to the book. To the book. Now, this book here, you have to watch the, I think, it, I'm not sure, let me see, let me check the timeline here. You gotta read this book first before you read, watch the third movie. So this book comes before the third movie. And it is a long book. It is 610 pages long. Amazing book. Amazing book. It says here on the back, the new novel and the most celebrated saga, The Man Who Gives It to Revenge It's Meeting, Michael Corleone, an American crime boss, Pursuing the mantle of the legitimacy, Nick Tracy, Jurassi, Jurassi, the former family top man hunted by the Corleones and the Feds, after an unforgettable betrayal, Daniel Brennan Shea, the ambitious brother of a galvanizing young president, out the top of Kingpin's organized crime, Carlo Tremonte, the New Orleans couple who lives to see a folk humiliation event at any cost, Tom Hagen. An, an, an Irish consigliere in an Italian world who plunged into treachery and moral peril. A consigliere, if you guys don't have never seen the movie or never watched any of the read any of the books, is uh, basically the right hand man of a godfather. A godfather basically is the top, is basically the don of a family, but it's a respectful meaning. The people respect you if they call you godfather. But now, a consigliere is a, an advisor, kind of guy that helps a guy through tough times. Kind of does a little this and that, you know. But it's a great, great book. And it's right before the third movie, and the third movie goes into like the 70s, to almost 1980. An amazing, amazing stuff, guys. So, pick up these three books. And read them, and watch the movies as well if you can get a chance to do that too. Oh, I forgot to mention this one here. The second book, The Godfather Returns, 
you will have to dig deep to find this one. They don't make this one. They don't print this one anymore. I don't know why they don't, but they don't. And I had to look hard to find this one, just so I have it. You know, I got it for less than six bucks, so that's really cool. Like five dollars and forty cents. So very pleased to get this in hardback for five dollars. But yeah, take your chances and read the books, follow the movies, watch the movies. And leave your comments below on the video if you guys want to have seen the movies or read the books and let me know what you guys think of them. Now with that being said guys, let's talk about the future of this channel. I, as you noticed, I deleted all my videos. I had 256 videos. And I really didn't think much of of the uh, channel for a long time because I got to the point where I was like, ah, this is, sucks. You know, because I wasn't getting any subscribers or anything, so I'm going to completely revamp the channel. There's going to be no more... There's not going to be any more dip reviews because they're out. They're gone. Too much of this... This right here... Every flavor, every brand has been reviewed. There's really nothing else to talk about. These dips. All we got to do now is just show the dip in a video and that's it. We know what we're dipping. Don't have to explain it because you probably dipped it. So, with that being said, we are not going to be, I'm not going to be reviewing any more dips. What I am going to be doing is doing vlogs. Basically, each video I come out with is going to be something about my life, something that I'm doing, where I'm headed, where I'm going, what I'm doing, and all that stuff. That being said, I hope this channel turns out to be a real success, and I hope everything goes right, it goes good. So, in the video below, when I post this video, comment what you would like to see on the channel. And I will start taking your suggestions and making them in two videos. Now, if I do get enough requests to review a dip, then I will probably do a dip review, but only if I get enough requests that it burns me to talk about it. It has to be more, it has to be at least 20 requests, it has to be at least 10 to 20 requests before I will do it a review on something. Now I will do product reviews, game reviews, book reviews, which I've just finished, food reviews, drink reviews, all kinds of things. I'll do all kinds of stuff for you guys. But dip reviews, it has to be at least 10 to 20 people that watch the video and comment below before I'll actually do a dip review or anything related to smoke tobacco. I will show you what I'm dipping. I'll show you the budget I'm dipping in, which is this one, which you saw at the beginning of the video. That'll be it. And that's basically it. I'll do commercial skits, whatever you want me to do. Just put a comment below, like this video, and subscribe to my channel. And when you type in Ty Cobby 2003, you'll come up with two channels. One has four subscribers, which is my second channel, which is going to be bloopers and other things. And what that'll be, basically the second channel, will probably be, if I screw up on a video, I might save that section and add a few bloopers in. Stuff, because I'm using YouTube Capture on my phone, so what I'll do is, if I screw up and I stop the video, that might be a shot or a segment of a video that I might put in on my second channel as a blooper reel. And I'll trim them up a little bit and add them to a, just a blooper reel, reel, say blooper reel 1, blooper reel 2. So we'll see how it goes. Other than that, guys, with that, I'm out. Keep dipping and spitting. Keep spitting black. Peace.